Okay, so I wanted to make this uh, video on 2 Corinthians 13.5, uh, the verse there that says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. And this is a remake of my previous video, and I've got some, I thought about the passage again, and I've got a few things to add and two small corrections towards the, uh, one towards the end and one, one somewhere in the middle, but we should get there as we go along. And... We've also got some new audio equipment, so uh, the quality of this video should be better than the quality of the previous one. So it says in verse 5, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So the, the common view, the mainstream view of the passage would be that Christians, saved believers, ought to look at their works uh, and on that basis decide whether they are really saved or not. And this is a flawed view of the passage. This is not what the passage is teaching at all. Uh, the passage is not saying that Christians should uh, decide uh, if they are saved based on their performance. Uh, but this is what uh, many false teachers are teaching. This is the predominant teaching and it gets hammered and hammered uh, time and time again. And it gets to the point wh where a person has heard uh, that view of the passage so many times that it just becomes ingrained in their mind that of course that's what it means because that's what everyone says or that's what most people say it means but that's, that's just not what it means. And uh, with most passages in the Bible uh, that we struggle with, quite understand, uh, looking at the context uh, really, really helps. And so we see there right in uh, verse uh, in verse two, Paul says, "I told you before and foretell you, uh, as if I were present the second time and being absent. Now I write to them which heretofore have sinned and to all other, that if I come a come again, I will not spur." So verses, uh, verse, verse 3 is addressed, uh, the next verse is addressed to them which heretofore have sinned and to all other. So he says, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, in verse 3, which to you word is not weak but is mighty in you. So in verse 3, Paul says that, uh, to you word, Christ is not weak towards them, but is mighty in them. And in order for Christ to be mighty in you, Christ has to be in you. And of course the Bible says, the Bible teaches that every believer has the spirit of Christ living inside of them. The Bible says, Christ in you in the hope of glory. And the Holy Spirit was given after that Jesus was glorified. So after Jesus rose again, uh, after Jesus died, was buried and rose again, that's that's when the Holy Spirit was given. And now every, every born-again believer has the Holy Spirit living inside of them. And so Paul says that uh, Christ is mighty in them uh, because th this is referring to, to the Holy Spirit there. And so uh, he's telling them in verse 3 that they are saved. Uh, Paul doesn't doubt that they are saved. Paul doesn't doubt that the Corinthians are saved and in fact if you read uh, we're gonna get there I'm getting a bit ahead of myself but if you go uh, to the first epistle and then even in the second epistle uh, there are many times that he uh, that he basically tells them that they are saved he says ye are my epistle he said he, he says that uh, they are letter of commendation and he, he makes similar statements that prove that he believed Paul believed that the Corinthians were were saved and he tells them they are saved in verse 3 and he goes on to say for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of God for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God toward by the power of God toward you so he says in verse 4 that uh, Jesus was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. So Jesus Christ lives by the power of God. 
he was resurrected by the power of God. Uh, it says, "We also, for we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. So the same power of God which uh, Jesus lives by is the same power of God which, which uh, Paul says that he and the in context there if you go to uh, 2nd Corinthians 12 in context I believe it's talking about Titus and and his brother which was sent unto the, the, the Corinthians so Paul says that they shall live with him by the power of God towards the towards the Corinthians and the Bible says I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth and the Bible also says that um, unto us which are saved it is the power of God so the gospel to them which are saved is the power of God and we also know that the fact that Jesus rose again uh, that's what begets us his resurrection is what gives us new life because the Bible says, uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we are saved by the resurrection. We are begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so his resurrection is what uh, begets us and it's both spiritual and it's gonna be physical uh, at the resurrection of the dead on the last day so Paul says that we shall live with him by the power of God another thing that I want to point out is that the Bible says uh, our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance so it also says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So there's this thing of, uh, I believe the Bible teaches that uh, the Holy Spirit is the power of God also. So we know that the Gospel is the power of God, the Holy Spirit is the power of God, the Holy Ghost is the power of God. So, uh, Paul says that we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. So, Paul is saying that they will live with Christ by the power of God toward the Corinthians. So, of course, they have communicated the power of God to the Corinthians. And they say that he says that they're going to live by that power. And in the next verse he says, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how, the, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Um, but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. So, um, where I really want to start off is verse 3, where it says, Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. If you go to 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, so the, the Corinthians were, were seeking proof of Christ speaking in Paul. They were seeking proof uh, that, uh, that Paul was the real thing, that, that he was genuine, that Christ was really speaking in him. And so 1 Corinthians 9 says, Am I not an apostle? The first verse says, uh, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? <clears throat> if I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine, examine me is this, have we not power to eat and to drink? So Paul says, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? <clears throat> So one of the evidences that he is the he is an apostle, that he is a true apostle, is he's saying that he's seen Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> That's one of the things that he brings up to 
uh, to make a case that he is an apostle. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the other thing he says, uh, are not ye my work in the Lord? So another thing that shows that Paul is an apostle is the fact that the Corinthians are his work in the Lord. So he says that they are his work in the Lord. That's that's another place that he's telling them basically that they are saved. His work in the Lord, if they are his work in the Lord and he is an apostle, then, then it means that they are saved. They are his fruit. And in the next verse he says, If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. So Paul is saying that the fact that the Corinthians are in the Lord, as in in Christ, shows it, it, it's a seal of his apostleship. So that, that's, that's a very important thing to, to notice there and uh, keep that in mind because it makes it, it makes for 2 Corinthians uh, 13 really easy to understand once we, once we have that to we, once we have that in mind, he says, "Mine answer to them that do examine me is this." So, of course, uh, there were Corinthians that uh, examined Paul, and then he goes on to say, "Have we not part to eat and to drink?" <clears throat> so, yeah, and in the, in, the, in the rest of the chapter, he goes on to explain how the fact that he and Barnabas are traveling missionaries that. Uh, it qualifies them to receive meat and drink uh, from from those who they preach the gospel unto. And yeah, so so the thing that I wanted you to notice there and j just keep in memory is that Paul said that uh, the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Uh, this is something something important to keep in mind. The fact that uh, the Corinthians are saved, the fact that the Corinthians are saved in the Lord is a seal of his apostleship. <clears throat> it's a seal of the fact that Christ is speaking in him. So, second, uh, the next place is, uh, let me find my place here, Second Corinthians 3. Do we begin? Second uh, Corinthians three, the first few verses says, "Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men." So Paul is saying that uh, the Corinthians are his epistle of commendation. And an epistle of commendation is basically something uh, today it would be a letter from a letter to a future employer uh, from a previous employer telling your future employer how how good you are. And so Paul is saying that the, the Corinthians are his epistle of commendation, and this is because he is the person who won them to the to the Lord, and therefore. The fact that they are in Christ, the fact that they are in the Lord, again, shows that Paul is genuine, that uh, he truly is an apostle. Uh, it's a letter of commendation to Paul. And so, uh, the next place I wanted to turn to is, is 2 Corinthians 11. Mm. Yeah, it says in verse 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So Paul is saying that false apostles transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. So if Paul is not an apostle of Christ, then the only other option is that he's a false apostle. Because only false apostles, it, it says that false apostles transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. So if Paul is not a ge genuine apostle, it means he's a false apostle. And therefore, 
uh, he wouldn't be able, if he were a false apostle, he wouldn't be able to win the Corinthian church to the Lord. He wouldn't be able to, to win those people to the Lord because he would be a fake, because he would be uh, a deceitful worker. According to verse 13, uh, being a false apostle would make him a deceitful worker, and we know that a deceitful worker is not somebody capable of uh, winning a church to the Lord. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 7, uh, let me turn there, Matthew 7, Uh, Matthew 7, uh, yeah, verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not, for, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So, uh, what Jesus is teaching there is that we can know whether a person is a false prophet or not uh, by the fruit that they pro produce. If a person uh, wins, uh, claims to have won somebody to the Lord or they claim to have won a bunch of people to the Lord and then you talk to those people and they aren't sure whether they are going to heaven or not, they believe in works of the law for salvation, then you know that that prophet was a, was a false prophet because the fruit that he produced, and the fruit is referring to to the souls that you you went to Christ. So the the fruit of that prophet is bad, showing that he's a false prophet. And so with uh, with that in mind, Paul winning the the Corinthians to the Lord. If the Corinthians are genuine born-again Christians then it shows that Paul is a good tree and therefore uh, not a deceitful worker not a false apostle because it says in verse 13 of uh, 2nd Corinthians 11 false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into into the apostles of Christ for such are for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ so, according to verse 13, false apostles are deceitful workers transforming themselves. So, uh, if the fruit of, uh, of Paul, which, which are the Corinthians, the Corinthians are the fruit of Paul. If the fruit of Paul is good fruit, then it means that he's not a deceitful worker, and it means that he's not a false apostle. And... It means he's a good tree and with all that in mind when we now get back to uh, chapter 13 I think we should have no difficulty understanding uh, what Paul is saying there so it says uh, in verse 3 of chapter 13 since ye seek since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me which to you word is not weak but is mighty in you for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of God for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobates but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates and so verse 3 since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me so they were seeking proof the Corinthians were seeking proof of Jesus Christ speaking in Paul and Paul says which to you word is not weak but is mighty in you so so he says already in verse 3 he's telling them that they are saved uh, he doesn't doubt uh, the point is that Paul is not doubting the salvation of of the Corinthians he doesn't doubt their salvation in fact uh, he said that uh, they are his epistle uh, in, in the first letter he said uh, that uh, they were babes in Christ in the first letter he said that 
yeah, he said, "Ye are my work in the Lord," and then he said that they are his, the, the seal of his apostleship. So, yeah, he said, "The seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord." So he is telling them that they are saved, and he is not doubting their their salvation. Uh, and so when we go to the next uh, verse here in Second Corinthians uh, 13, he says, For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also, we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. And so Paul is saying that they shall live uh, with Jesus by the power of God toward the Corinthians and so they communicated the power of God uh, toward the Corinthians and they believed that the same power of God which they communicated unto Corinthians is the same power which they're gonna live by and so they believe that they are saved by the same power which they communicated unto Corinthians. So it makes sense that since uh, Paul and Titus and the brother in Christ there from uh, from the context in, uh, in, in chapter 12, it makes sense that if they are saved by the same power which they communicated unto, uh, unto the Corinthians, then the Corinthians should be saved by the by the same power and he says in verse 5 examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobates so what he's basically saying there is that since they seek proof of Christ speaking in him they should examine themselves uh, whether they be in the faith prove your prove them own selves uh, because they are his epistle, they are his letter of commendation, they are the seal of his apostleship in the Lord, they are his work in the Lord, and they are the proof of Christ speaking in him. They are that proof, and that's why he's saying, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So he's telling them, don't you know that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And then he says in, in, in the next verse, verse 6, But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates, uh, meaning that if the Corinthians are reprobates, then who, whoever won them to the Lord is a reprobate also. Uh, because every tree bringeth forth after its own kind, the Bible teaches. And so a reprobate begets a reprobate, a, and a saved person begets a saved person. So, that I, so, so Paul says, I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. So he's saying that, so Paul is saying that he trusts that uh, they will examine themselves and see that they are in the faith, that they are his work in the Lord, that they are the seal of his apostleship, uh, that they are his letter of commendation and they, they will see that they are saved and therefore see that they are not reprobates and and thereby they should see that uh, this is proof of Christ speaking in Paul and so this is what this is talking about uh, verse 5 is not telling you to look at your works and on that basis decide whether you're saved or not this is basic this is simply not what the verse is teaching uh, it's teaching that uh, that the Corinthians should examine themselves and and realize that uh, they are not reprobates and that and and that th therefore therefore Paul is not re a reprobate and therefore Paul is a genuine genuine apostle uh, Christ is speaking in him because. They are his work in the Lord, and he's won them to Christ. And yeah, I just wanted to make this short study to to cover these verses. And the Bible is very clear that salvation is a free gift, 
it says the gift of God is, etern is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and if we we were if we had to look at our works and decide if we are not saved or not if we are saved or not depending on our works and how or how good we are or our performance then salvation would cease to be a free gift it would no longer be a free gift it would be something co that is conditional on how we live something that is conditional on our performance and that would be strings attached as well because if i give you a gift and then uh, put in question whether that gift is even yours if you don't work for me if you don't do good things if you if, if you don't do good works for me if i'm starting to question your gift and starting to instill fear in you as to whether that gift is even yours if you're not living right then that's not really a gift that's strings attached and salvation has got no strings attached it's a totally free gift you receive it through faith uh, you believe on Christ, you call upon the name of the Lord, you receive the gift, it's yours no, ma no matter what happens in the future. You still have that gift no matter how much you sin in the future, it's yours. I know many people don't like that, but that's the truth. And of course the Bible teaches that, the Bible says, uh, uh, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So the Bible teaches that as the, sons of, as the sons of God, as the children of God, we will be disciplined on this earth for, for, the, uh, for our disobedience, but we are still the children of God, we are still on our way to heaven, but we are going to get disciplined, we are going to get judgments coming our way on this earth. And uh, there, there are many examples of that in the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, the believers were disciplined for disregarding the Lord's Supper with illness, uh, with death. Uh, David in the Old Testament was disciplined uh, for for uh, adultery and, and murder by God heavily. He was disciplined very heavily for that. So we will be disciplined on this earth as believers, but we are still believers. We, we are still the children of God. We, we are sinned in the family. God doesn't kick us out of the family for disobedience. He, he disciplines us like any any parent would. So salvation is totally free. It's that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. You put your trust in Jesus Christ and he saves you. And he saves you eternally. And that's all, all I have for now. And thank you for, thank you for watching.